I'm Axel Hanauska, I'm one of the co-chairs, the two legs of the chair sit over there, the other two legs. And I start with a housekeeping thing. Do not forget to fill out the evaluation form, please. Okay. Um, there is something that you need to keep in mind on the back of the first page with the question, where would you like to see the next symposium take place? Um, it is not intentional that Washington DC was left out, unfortunately. So please add Washington DC to the list of your choices. All right, but very important. Um, so I have been asked to speak about raising the bar in mesothelioma. And uh, what I would like to do is I would like to share with you my very personal um, opinion. I put everything up for discussion. And um, I would like to start with one of the keywords that we have discussed at the board several times that came up here. And that is awareness. Can I have the first slide? I have one slide. Don't worry about it. Okay. So, you know I'm jet lagged coming from Europe. So what I did last night while you were asleep, I um, thought I look for the number of publications by year. So you see year 2006, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11, that's part of it. You see the number of mesothelioma publications here in the blue bars. And I just picked a related tumor, non-small cell lung cancer. And you see the bar here. So, and you could, can you, can you make one more click? I've animated the slide because I couldn't sleep. Okay, very good. So if, if, you, if you look at this, click again, um, you could basically say, well, this is kind of a measure of the awareness gap that we have. Now, awareness, of course, is a very complicated thing if you ask the question, why is this? Number one, of course, lung cancer is much more uh, prevalent, the incidence is much higher, the visibility is much higher, but also the funding is much higher. And if you ask me, you know, for my personal perspective, what can we do here is we need to do research, and good research which will give us publications, which will give us, if the publications are good and we have luck and hard work um, that have to come together, um, they will create attention. So when I was thinking about what is really raising the bar, I came up with a little list that I would like to share with you. Banking, collaboration, biomarkers, whole genome sequencing, proteomics, metabolomics, metabolomics and the thing is done. Um, it's a little more complicated, I think. So let me, let me look a little closer at banking. We talked about banking yesterday, and I cannot stress enough how important it is to have tissue these days. And to feed the bank with tissue, but also to make the tissue available from the bank. And it's not just that you put some tissue under any condition in a freezer. You have really to think about the de-identification, annotation, which basically means you can't work with a chunk of tumor or tissue without knowing how the patient that gave that tissue is doing. Because you want to know something about the prognosis. So if we measure something in the tissue, that is it correlated with poor prognosis, indicating that the patient probably needs a more aggressive therapy in order to be kept alive? Or is it a marker for good prognosis that we could uh, use, for instance, to save a patient from chemotherapy that would otherwise give them side effects. Um, the storage conditions, the quality of the material are very, very um, important things. It all sounds so easy. You know, we want to have banking. Great word, but there is a lot of work behind it. Collaboration. Collaboration needs to take place on a lot of different levels, I think. Banking, across institute, with banking, across institutions, we talked about multi-center trials. If we think that we want, that we're all here, 
because we want to support the development of therapies that are successful. We need to have clinical trials. It's out of discussion. We've got to have clinical trials. We've got to have large clinical trials. Um, we got to have multi-center clinical trials. We need to work together across modalities. Modalities means there's the radiotherapist, there's the medical oncologist. So these modalities need to work together. Um, and I think the SPORE activity that the Foundation has uh, engaged on is a great, uh, great progress here. Now we don't know whether the SPORE will be funded, but one thing is for sure. The Foundation, which is basically living from your support, um, is acknowledged among the, or within the community of mesothelioma researchers as being an integral part and an important element. Um, we need to set up trial consortia. So at the present time, you know, clinical trials um, are done among uh, multi-center or cent uh, institutions, but we could improve this organization. And Lee, um, I think you have made the first steps and proposals California versus Mexico or Germany. And there is no reason, and it works to the, uh, no, no reason to have different organizations that don't talk to each other. So I think one of the um, important steps, and Mary, I'm very thankful uh, to you that you have uh, done this, that you started this, that you're doing this, is to increase the communication between the various parties um, that are interested here. Next thing is biomarkers. Um, we live in an area in a time uh, of rapid change um, scientifically. We know a lot about um, the molecular makeup of a tumor cell. By far we don't know everything. But what we know could be theoretically used. And that was um, part of the topic of yesterday's discussion. Um, that we identify a biomarker, hopefully the biomarker is really relevant for the disease, we create a therapy against that biomarker, and we probably be able then to help <coughs> a subgroup of patients whose tumors really express that time. Now again, we are living at, at the present time um, in the way for maybe two biomarkers that could direct um, treatment. But we must be aware that tumor cells live from a highly cross-linked network um, of survival signals. So if you have um, 10 different pathways that a cell could activate, and I'm, I'm making the number small for you, <coughs> and you block just one pathway, you can see wonderful results um, in vitro in cell lines, maybe in um, tumors xenografted to animals that depend on that pathway. that pathway. When you take it to the human being, without any, uh, to the natural tumor basically, then sometimes you find that you have much less activity than you hope to have. So PI3K uh, kinase uh, pathway, for instance, one of these examples, we can like that pathway very nicely. But if the cell activates other pathways, then um, the cell finds a way to rescue it. So raising the bar means we need to think about how we can contribute to the development of knowledge and clinical um, interact with multiple pathways. And we're talking about various levels of uh, biomarkers. We can look at the whole genome, our genetic making, that's the DNA. We can look at a part 
of that genome, which is currently activated um, and processed into, on, on its way to be processed into proteins. When we take that tissue out, that's RNA, and we can look at the protein level. Therapy is certainly an important step further uh, forward, but it would also require um, enormous resources. And this is why I'm um, also personally very thankful for everything you did. Now, whole genome sequencing is the next level of complexity and some colleagues say of confusion. So we will have the technical possibilities to sequence the genetic making of every single cell. <clears throat> it's about three billion bases. And we will be able, through highly developed information technology, to hopefully um, detect a pattern of mutations, changes, which basically replaces our single change approach that we have currently. <clears throat> so that we can say, if there is a combination of certain locations, this is the tumor that we need to treat. Okay. Um, but this is going to be very complicated, and it needs a lot of investment and funding. And yet we're only at part of the machinery of the cells. And the machinery is actually that part that doesn't do the work that just does contain the information how to do the work, and that's the DNA and the RNA. So if we say a cell has usually something like 30,000 genes, roughly 10,000 genes are always switched on, there are several thousands or tens of thousands more proteins, and these are the factories of the cell. So we have, uh, there are currently efforts to get um, I would say it breaks with this complexity. Um, and this is the field of proteomics. Um, the machinery is yet to be validated with regard to the results. But if we look down five or ten years, I think we'll have progress there, and I think the foundation hopefully will be able to play a role there. And lastly, the output of the factories. And these are the metabolites. Um, they are even harder to um, estimate how many metabolites a cell has, and it's a very fluid picture. So, we are looking at a complex picture, and yet I totally agree with what uh, the other colleagues of the chair said, Hannes said yesterday, uh, we're here to defeat um, mesothelioma. And this is and remains our goal. We just shouldn't underestimate that it takes some time, that it takes that they we're dealing in a and living in a very complicated world. But I want to see that our foundation to thrive in all aspects that I've just mentioned. And to further expand its role to bring all stakeholders together. And um, with a goal, as Anna has said yesterday, to eliminate the mesothelioma and make it part of So to this end, I would like to take the opportunity to extend my special gratitude and thanks to Dr. Rafael Hassan, um, our immediate past chairman of the Scientific Advisory Board. Um, he had to work together with the board through lots of applications and he really volunteered his time to do so. And over the past three years, Dr. Um, Hassan has been able, thanks to all the support that we received and we gave, to, um, oversaw, uh, to oversee awards for research totaling $2 million, which I think is a very nice thing. So I wasn't aware that I'm supposed to give you a present up here. Um, I just learned this 30, 39 seconds ago. May I ask you to come up here? And Hannah, would you also would like to come up here so that the chair is complete?
Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. proposals and this is a blessing because it shows interest um, of researchers in addressing the foundation for support and I'll tell you one thing um, I was recently on a business trip in Australia which is not really the next suburb of uh, where we are and I happened to talk to Mr. Philly and my colleagues in Australia and uh, they knew you Mary and they knew the foundation, and they had applied for a grant. So, I think this is very nice. I would also like to take this opportunity to um, welcome um, Dr. Uh, Lee Krug, our incoming chairman for the SAB. Um, and Lee, you will uh, moderate the panel discussion right now. It will follow now, and um, you will introduce to us the panel members. So, I uh, thank you very much. <laughs>